My personal interest in the Flaxman Maltings is partly to do with the heritage aspect of the site, but also for its use as a community hub and as a focus for the arts and music, both now and in the future. I would like to see it develop a relationship with local inhabitants, whose relatives have worked here and who would, I hope, foster a feeling of ownership and pride in the development. The community has generally been supportive of our efforts. For the last Heritage Open Days in September 2014, we had roughly 1,200 visitors, so there's a great deal of interest in the project. We will always have a few express negative feelings about the buildings and about how long it's taking and how much money it might cost, but generally people are glad to see that something is happening and interested to see how it will all come together. And into the garage and we were sent in batches and anyway the first batches come back they said what's the rats they said when you were, when they were getting the straw the rats were running out of the straw and we had to fill these we fill our and then we slept on that there was no beds or anything you just slept on there with a couple of blankets i mean the only only wash houses we'd got were down on the ground floor and it was a series of long troughs and then over the top of the trough was a little stand with a little shelf on where you could put your mirror and then there was cold water taps all the way down no eating just cold water so you had to shave with cold water The day-to-day -day, uh, operation was to uh, make sure that we'd got barley coming into our maltings, control quantities um, per ton. It would then go into the malt houses, uh, would be steeped, which is covered with water, covered with water for 24 hours. It's a seed, like any seed, it needs water to enable it to germinate and then enable it to, to grow. So it would be under water for 24 hours, the water would be changed, um, every so often. Um, it would then be discharged from the steep tanks onto the malting floors and would grow there for a period of five days. It would have to be moved each day because if it was just left without being moved the rootlets then which would be growing would map together and if it wasn't moved um, you would be able to roll it up as a carpet after five days and so on. After five days it would go up to the kilns Well, Shrub that part of Shrubbery was the was the working class mm, part of Shrubbery. Yeah. Everybody lived at the other side. That's they? right, yeah. And in the old towns, it's always the, the east because the wind blows that way and all the rest of it. All the town infection, all the town's dirty stuff used to blow towards Livington. That's basically there's the history behind Shrewsbury. And when they, when they uh, before they built the station, there were six to eight hundred people living in that area who worked at the flax mill. Six to eight hundred people. Mm. And there was no building between then and Shrobe there. You could see the flax mill. There was no building between Shrobe and it at the end. Mm -hmm. Imagine what the flax mill looked like from Shrewsbury, <laughs> you know, before that church was built. But but uh, I think so, I'm quite yeah. impressed with what they're thinking of doing. It's a great one building. It's got to stand up.